Now that we've seen how to apply transformations at different levels, let's go over how to easily manage them. Let's start with a new path group made up of two paths. Path 2 contains a transform section, but path 2 belongs to path group 1, which also has its own transform section. So we're going to go over how to manage this transform hierarchy. To do this, click on the basic transform tool. By selecting either transform or path group 1, we can modify this element with the transform widget. The bounding box will depend on the elements in path group 1. By selecting path group 1, the bounding box will only represent this element. Unfold path 1's transform section to better understand what will happen. In order to work on this path, we can either select transform or the path itself. Using the transform widget will modify the transform parameters. This is particularly useful, for example, when you want to switch path 2 to difference. By selecting it, its bounding box will appear in the viewer and we can use the widget to modify it. Select path group 1 and you can see that this element's bounding box has been dynamically recalculated based on this Boolean operation. Since the resulting shape is smaller, its bounding box is smaller as well. Going back to union mode will produce a bigger bounding box. In contrast, setting path 2 to intersect will create a much smaller image with an adapted bounding box. Switch path 2 to union mode and apply changes to path group 1 by making it smaller, rotating it, and moving it to the left. Reselecting and moving path 1 will combine two transformations for this element, one that depends on the other. In this case, the widget based on the current selection will adapt to this specific transformation and will be displayed as it was prior to the path group transformation. That's why it's not necessarily aligned with path 1 or path 2's current position. But we can temporarily disable the path group's transform by adjusting the amount parameter. If we set it to 0, we can see that path 2's widget is now aligned with its actual position. If we really need to work with the widget that's aligned with a particular path, we can set this amount value to 0 to disable the path group transformation. Remember that the amount value doesn't have to be between 0 and 1, but it can be pushed a bit further or even inverted to apply a transformation in the opposite direction. But here we're just going to use it by going between values of 0 and 1. So keep in mind that there are several different transform levels. Those apply to paths, path groups, as well as layers. Remember too that the global transform applied to a layer is for positioning the result of the shapes generator. Combining all these transformations will ensure maximum quality when working with vector elements. There won't be any pixelation. So here for example, we have the layer containing the generator rotated by negative 45 degrees. This shapes generator contains a list of elements, including a path group that has a transform section rotated by 25 degrees. And finally, each path in this path group can be rotated. For example, here we can rotate path 2 by negative 30 degrees. The transformations are combined before the result is drawn by the fill style. This notion of hierarchy makes it possible to create extremely complex animations. In this video, we went over how to manage each element's transform settings, nest path and path group transformations, and temporarily disable transformations applied with the amount parameter.